again. Welcome to today's top story. We want to talk about the top story that sort of has been a lingering one. And there are so many people who are talking about how desperate the situation is. It's about the environment and it's about whether or not we on an individual basis can do anything about it. It's about getting together and doing something about it. If you're wondering how you can do that, Kara Flanagan joins us um, in our studios this morning. And Kara, you're here to sort of give us some tools because I think a lot of us um, have good intentions if we have the knowledge, right? Yes. So what do you think is, is, is the biggest challenge for you? I, I, I think at this point, um, for the last 25 years, we've all been um, doing our best to recycle, to not pollute, pick up litter, um, uh, buy energy efficient appliances, uh, retrofit our homes, buy electric vehicles. There's things uh -huh. that we've done individually and that's not pushing the needle fast enough. And um, so collectively, um, we are the mass, we are uh, the majority. So we need to come together in order to make significant climate change. Because we're at a point right now that we're in ecological crisis. We're suffering uh, the mass extinction is what they're calling it. We're losing 200 uh, species a day to extinction. And we're actually on that list. 200 species a day? A day around oh the planet. So, and we're on that list because we're on a course right now where uh, carbon is increasing again and action has not been successful to bring us into a safe climate. Now, and having said that though, Karen, you don't want to discourage the individual from doing the very best that they can on a daily basis. It's just bigger than that. It, it is, and, and we're all gonna do our best, and we're going to have to. However, we need to uh, collectively pool our resources and demand that our governments take the necessary action. Uh, the International Panel on Climate Change report that just came out indicated that we only have 12 years to do this. Mm -hmm. where, where are you going to be in 12 years time? And your children. So we have to act fast and we can do it collectively. And the thing is we have the technology, we have the resources, uh, we have the research, we, c we just don't have the political will. So coming together, and this is a worldwide movement that started in uh, the United Kingdom in the end of October, and already it spread to 130 countries. And it's called the Extinction Rebellion. Yes. How did you find it? Well, I found it because I kind of keep an eye for environmental things. Uh, I'm kind of a climate... Um, uh, Junkie. Yes, a junkie. Yes, I, I think, uh, uh, and collectively, individuals, we know that uh, that this is serious, that we're racing towards a cliff. There's a mental health issue that goes with that. They're calling it um, uh, eco-anxiety. Um, so, wow. Yeah, and we have a, a collective grief for the animals that we have lost, for the fact that we could actually um, not have a livable planet. Uh, the, the science is overwhelming, and uh, right now at COP24, I don't know if you've noticed um, uh, Greta Thunberg, the 15-year-old Swedish girl who's doing the school strikes on Fridays, and she made a presentation basically calling out the governments, you're not doing enough, uh, climate change is happening whether you like it or not, and the children and people have to rise up together. And so when I found uh, Extinction Rebellion, it was just like a relief that there are other people out there who are doing their best as individuals and realizing we trusted our governments were acting on the science and uh, making good decisions to keep us safe, and they aren't. So collectively, uh, I know there's other people out there who are as concerned as I am. So there's people who support other uh, um, uh, uh, other climate groups like Greenpeace and World Wildlife and local uh, Kensington um, Conservancy and uh, there's Clean North. And so we're all kind of fighting for the same thing to protect our planet. We only have one. And as much as Elon Musk is trying to get to Mars, we're not going to get there in time. So with 12 years left, we have to come together. The best way to uh, make the significant change is through peaceful, and it has to be peaceful, peaceful civil disobedience, and that's coming together. And that's, uh, I'm sure you've noticed uh, the, the riots that have happened in France. That's not as peaceful. Um, mm -hmm. But it is a result of the climate emergency. And we're in an emergency. And when you think about the title of Extinction Rebellion, we have a moral obligation to fight to live. 
for ourselves and for our children and for the animals that can't do anything on Why the planet. Why are people getting it, Kara? What's wrong? It's, a, it's so big, Luann, it's terrifying. It is terrifying. And um, we also trust that the governments are making decisions based on the science. And then when we step back and we notice that they aren't or that what we have had in place is being dismantled, that is extremely frightening. So uh, it, because it's such a terrifying thing, we have grief because we know that this is serious. We can't not be brave. We have to do our best. And our best is coming together, joining forces, and forcing our government to not, to not lie to us. They have to tell us the truth about the urgency and the emergency that we're in. Now, when you talk government, you mean like municipal all the way up? All the way up. All, it, it's going to take... Uh, we've done this before, okay? Uh, we have uh, experienced existential threat in the Cold War with nuclear. And so when we're humans, we're resourceful, uh, we're smart, we, uh, we figure out how to solve the problem. So fortunately, we dismantled the Cold War and we backed off on nuclear weapons and stuff. So I remember people talking about when they were kids having to, uh, uh, alarms going off and they mm -hmm. had to hide under their desk. So that kind of existential threat we get. We also saw it in World War II. The free world was at risk. And so we mobilized as a world, as a country. Uh, everybody was pulling in the same direction. And that's the kind of effort and energy that we're going to need to address climate change. So we're, we're close to that point is what you were saying. We, we don't have time. Ecology. We don't have time. We have 12 years time. So dilly-dallying and talking about it and arguing about the science, the preponderance of evidence is there. And if you're, if you're denying it or dismissing it, get out of the way so the rest of us can do something about this problem and save you. And we're, we're, we're doing this because we love humanity. We love our planet. We only have one. Why aren't people listening? Well because it's scary, mm -hmm. they're distracted. They don't believe it. Well, I, I think but more believe than don't believe. I think Do the, the non-believers So have, that's reassuring. Well, the non-believers are tied to big money too, right? They're, they're, they're government people who are they paid can't by big it, corporations. Be There's, and uh, the fossil fuel industry has infiltrated everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, if you're talking to someone who doesn't believe in climate change or whatever, just follow the money because they're, they're compromised. Every one of the rest of us is very comfortable with the preponderance of evidence. We have to act, and we have to act fast. And so uh, our capitalism system is actually part of the problem. If you think about we, uh, infinite growth on a finite planet, that does not make sense. That's a cognitive dissonance that we have as citizens, which causes part of the mental health problems that we're all experiencing. Nobody wants to consider that their children or grandchildren are not going to have a safe future. We, and economically, we cannot afford to rebuild our infrastructure with the growing f um, floods and forest fires and uh, disruptions that are going to be a result of climate change. And we're in it. Our um, environmental commissioner of Ontario, who unfortunately is, is her, her position is now threatened, she uh, made the statement here when she was up in uh, um, last winter that we are in a climate that we have never experienced before. People talk about the climate having changed uh, previously. Mm -hmm. Yes, but never like this, never this fast. And we are in over 400 parts per million carbon. We're witnessing uh, the, the glacial melts, climate, uh, um, uh, forest fires, the fires in Perry Sound affected Extreme us. Extreme weather conditions. Uh, yeah, the drought that we had, mm, yeah. we're gonna have more drought. That affects our food supply. How can farmers farm when, when they get flooding or drought. Or drought, one or the other. Yes. So what can we do about it? You have something uh, coming up tomorrow that is a yes. suggestion, uh, and you're hoping everybody will yeah. go. Um, uh, Greta Thunberg at um, uh, COP24 uh, had a call for action, and um, she wants to have a global strike tomorrow. So um, I put it out on Facebook, and I'd invite people to come down to our government office at Terry Sheehan's office at 369 Queen Street tomorrow at 1130 in the morning. and. Um, just to show 
that we need serious action. And um, Greta is calling on this. Uh, however, her movement is very complementary to the movement of uh, um, Extinction Rebellion. Mm -hmm. we, we need to unite to live and rebel to live and make our voices and heard. And fight for our life. Yes. We're, we're citizens and um, we have a moral duty to protect ourselves and our planet. And then you also have something coming up in January that you have planned. Yes, I, I'm, I know that there's other people out there who are interested and I invite them to come down to the library. Um, I've got the library booked, uh, the Centennial Library downtown. Um, and that's uh, Sunday, Janu January 20th at um, 2.30, I believe. So please come on down and, um, and we can chat about what we need to do, what we'd like to do here in the Sioux because I know there are other people interested. And at the very least, we can make banners and, mm -hmm. um, and uh, flags and, and plan for ultimately, there's going to be a massive worldwide day of action on April 15th. So uh, we need our voices to be heard by our representatives. We need to hold them to account. We need them to not to lie to us about the seriousness and uh, the danger that we're in. We need them to um, change the laws and get us to a zero carbon um, emissions by 2025. So that's how aggressive this has to be. That's a very short period of time. And we also need to hold our governments uh, accountable. So we need um, citizen assembly to um, keep them on course and hold them to task. So if this is of a concern to you, and it obviously should be, um, of knowledge is power and education is power. So if you want to take a first step, ideal to show up at uh, Terry Sheen's office tomorrow morning at 11.30 and ask folks like Kara some opinions. What do they think of? What are the numbers? How bad is it really? Great, great opportunity. Good work. Thank you so much, Kara. Appreciate you coming in and letting us know what's going on. Thank you so much for your interest. We'll be back on Top Story right after this.